how we doing everyone mature with another Logic Pro X or 10 tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the interface. So this is going to be more of a high level overview of what's going on here in the new Logic. And this is going to be more geared for those just beginning here. So uh, just keep that in mind. So let's get to know this interface. First, I'm going to be splitting it up into two, two different areas. The first is going to be the control bar up here at the top, and the next is going to be the track area down here. So let's start with the control bar. Up over here on the far left is going to be our library. So I have an audio file selected, and you can get all kinds of different settings for that audio file. Uh, we can select sharp strum inside of the acoustic guitar. And you can see it changes our track to that setting. It even has a nice track stack of what uh, that is what is contained in that single track. Uh, so very, very nice there. Uh, next is going to be a MIDI track, and you can see our library changes. Now this is going to be our set of you know instruments, where we can go and find all the preset instruments inside of Logic. So we're going to go to Synthesizer, we're going to go to Lead, and we're going to select uh, Power Lead, because why not, right? This also is a track stack. Uh, filter and Power Lead, interesting. So these presets not only are, are just a track, they can be a track stack as well, so multiple tracks combined into one. So a uh, very nice thing to keep in mind, and uh, a very good place to start, especially uh, getting those presets uh, you know, created. All right, next is gonna be the inspector. I have this open almost 100% of the time because it doesn't take up very much screen real estate. It has a lot of important information, and it's very easy to produce. So what do I mean by this? We have selected the sharp strum here, okay? So what's going on here is it's showing that track, sharp strum, you can see the name down here at the bottom left, uh, and then the output. So this is gonna be one level up in the routing area. If we select power lead, we can see that we have a bus here as well. So if we select that bus, it'll show a view of the auxiliary track linked by that bus. Uh, so if we select output again, it'll go back to that output. So it's like a single step up in the routing, wherever it may be. And you can select, dynamically select that as well. So very important uh, place here. We can change, we can view the instrument, we can see all the plugins on it, we can do the volume faders, the panning, we can do all of our I.O. here. Very, very important view. And it doesn't take up very much screen real estate, like I said. So just keep it up. This is, this is my normal view of logic. Uh, so I'm just going to keep it up. Uh, so next is going to be basically our toolbar. All of our functions here. Uh, if you don't see the function you want to use, right-click and customize toolbar. And there's going to be a lot more options here. You can select whatever you want, take away whatever you want, and you can save as default so you can open up in any of your projects. Very important. Also a thing to note is you can right click and customize the control toolbar as well. And there's a lot of stuff in here that you can uh, you can have up there. And then you can also save as default. So very nice way uh, to kind of customize logic to exactly how you want it. Uh, so we're going to pull up that toolbar. Next is going to be the quick help. It pulls up here. When we have the inspector open, it just pulls up inside of this inspector. If we don't have that open, it'll just pull up an extra little box down here. You roll over and you get information on whatever you ha your mouse is over. So a very nice way, um, a very nice way to learn for those just starting out. So uh, next is going to be the smart controls. Uh, this is new inside of Logic Pro 10, and uh, there's a lot of things good about this. What I mean here is that if I select the start sharp strum, it has a compressor, EQ, reverb, and sends all here combined in this single interface. So the compressor, EQ, reverb, and sends is all different functionality. You would find that you'd have to open up multiple plugins. But instead, you have it all contained in this one view, this one interface, very easy to mix, produce, a very nice way of quickening up uh, exactly what you're doing uh, when you're producing. So very, very important view. And you can see it changes dynamically as you select different tracks. And I'll be going into this more in depth in a future tutorial. So next is going to be the mixer. So like I said, the, in, the uh, inspector over here is a view of the mixer. And as you can see, that's the case. But what are all these other tracks here? What's going on here? So you can see our sharp strum here, and you can also see our power lead. These are the two things in our workspace or our track view up there in the, in the normal thing. The rest of these are tracks that are either auxiliary tracks linked by buses or they're linked by you know certain particular things. Uh, these are all auxiliary tracks. You can see that their inputs are particular buses and also this is an output. So all the auxiliary tracks 
currently, except for this delay, is linked to our output. Uh, so it's just just a very uh, more it's a it's a more in depth overview of the routing for the entire project. You can toggle exactly whatever you want over here on the top right in the menu of that mixer. Just get to know this interface. You're going to be spending a lot of time in here. All right. So next is going to be our editors, and this changes depending on what track what kind of track we have selected. For audio, if I had an audio file in here, you'll be able to see the waveform. You can edit the waveform. Do whatever you want to that waveform. It's basically what this is. You have your entire project with all of your files arranged how you want them. You can select, double click any of those files and zoom in on that particular file. And you're going to open up in the editor. If it's a MIDI track, it's going to look like, or if it's an audio track, it's going to look like this. If it's a MIDI track, it's going to look like this. Uh, so this is something that you need to get to know because you can go in and specifically edit particular parts of those files. And you're going to be using this all the time. Uh, so good thing to note there as well. This is going to be our navigation. Pretty universal symbols here. I hope you know what's going on there. The next section is going to be uh, what I like to call the tempo, key, and signature area because you can change the tempo, key, and signature in this area. Alrighty then. So the next part is going to be uh, a few different functions, toggle functions. Uh, so the first one is going to be loop. Just turning on that loop function that we can select and put anywhere we want. Um, we can toggle that. Next is going to be the replace function. Uh, and then next is tuner. We're selected, we have a, a MIDI track here selected, so it's grayed out. If we select an audio track, you can pull it up, and it's just a pop up. And I'm a little sh uh, sharp there, so sorry about that. All right, next is going to be the solo function. So whatever you have selected is soloed automatically. That's the only thing that's going to be played as you play through that section of the song. Uh, count in is you press record. It goes back four measures, counts in, and then starts recording wherever your playhead was. Very important when you're recording. Next is going to be the, uh, temp this is basically where you're going to be, you know, having your metronome or click. So very also important for uh, your recording. And so the next area, these four buttons, very, very important functions. Uh, the first is going to be your list editor. Uh, so it has a vent list, marker list, tempo list, and signature list. So it's going to be more of a detailed look at some things that are going on inside your project. I'm not going to go too into depth here, but just know that this is a good place to view uh, particular parts of your track or your, your project. So next, this is new here to uh, Logic Pro 10. Uh, so you can add notes to your project and also to your track. I have a project note here already created. So if I select any of our tracks, it stays the same, right? If I go to track, I edit and say track note and press done. This note is going to be tied to that sharp strum. If I go to power lead, it goes away. So what I see this being used for is if you're mixing with somebody else, this is a good way to put what you've done and also what needs to be done. It's almost like versioning the project at, at its current state. It's very, very useful. You can even put notes in here so that if you are working on a bunch of other projects and you come back to it, what do you, how do you know what is going on in the project, right? Where did you stop? You can just make a quick note here and you can come back to it and know exactly what's going on. Very important. Next is the loop section. For those of you just starting out and for those of you looking for some inspiration, this is a great, great place to look for you know, different things that you may want. Uh, and, and this is a very Experience. important inter interface because all of these loops, all these audio files, all these MIDI files are royalty free. Meaning if you put these in a track that you are going to be making money off of, you do not have to pay any royalties or any money to Apple. So very important. So use these, go crazy with them, put them in whatever you want. And uh, you know, it's very, you know, very useful. Uh, if not for putting in a song for just finding inspiration, I find myself browsing through all these random loops just to just to find something cool to do in a song so kind of cool to know uh, next is going to be the browser so you can browse through your project all the audio files in your project you can even go into the media so that's going to be your uh, music and your movies on your system and that's just going to be things found in those particular folders under your username and then you can also go into the all files which is a look at your entire hard drive or external hard drive, whatever is connected to this computer, you can go in and look for certain audio files. This interface is drag and drop. So you, if you find a particular audio file, click it and drag it onto the interface and it will automatically import here into Logic. 
So, you know, very nice and useful view there. So I find myself using that quite a bit. All right, so that is the control bar. A lot of useful information there. Uh, gonna be using that a lot. Every single one of these buttons are tied to a key command. If you wanna get good at logic, if you wanna dazzle people, get to know those key commands. Just makes production easier and faster as well. Speaking of key commands, Everything here inside, almost everything here inside of the track area is also tied to a key command. So for example, if we were to, in this menu up here, uh, we can select, you know, our pointer tool, whatever we want, right? It's, it's tied to the T command, so we can open up that wherever we are and select. Very, very nice and quick way of transferring to whatever tool that we want. Uh, so that's just kind of an example of what's going on. Here we can select between our automation, we can go into flex, we can find our playhead. If it playhead's down here, you can select it. It kind of goes to wherever that is. Pretty sweet. Uh, there's smart snap snapping. There's going to be uh, you know your zooming if you don't want to do that with your trackpad. You know, all kinds of cool stuff. So here is what here's the workspace. You know where all of our tracks are located. Uh, so that's going to be the important part, right? And then also here are the track headers. And so there's a lot more going on here inside of the track headers than there was, or not a lot, but there is more, uh, meaning the volume fader here on the track, which is pretty cool. You can It's just a nice, quick way of mixing um, very, you know, just really easily here, just stuck inside of the track area. And then also there's going to be the, you know, the ruler, which is where your playhead slides along. And so... That's really it. Not too much. Hopefully you'll learn something. A lot of these functions I go into a lot more in depth. Uh, so, you know, check out any of those tutorials. But that's all I have to say for this. Everyone, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe. Uh, for those of you who want to select my next tutorial, take the survey in the description below. And also, always, have a great day. I'll see you very soon.